What can I do, girl? So much in love, girl. What was that marriage like? It was just so much love, so much togetherness. And he was so attentive to her. I mean, it was just loving family. When I saw them together, I can say they looked like they were loving. Um, I would have never guessed um, anything different. She was our backbone of our family. She always made sure we had the right education. We paid our bills. We was all in order. What would I do without you, love? Well, right now, deputies are telling us that a 35-year-old woman was shot and killed by her husband inside of this home. Dude, I shot my wife. I shot my wife. And he's so like, he, what? I said, I shot my wife. I said, let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Young children were also inside at the time of this shooting. Ever in your wildest dreams think that something like this would happen? No, I would never. Especially less than 24 hours after seeing her, no. No point in my military mind would I ever want my weapon in my wife. I love her. Y'all hear me? Probably. I love her. Have you ever done that before? Hell no. Oh, okay. Hell no. A good evening. Really been an emotional day for these loved ones. They do tell me they're at a loss for words and can't believe this entire thing happened. And I hung the phone up because I thought I was dreaming. The detective called and he said, don't hang up. It's not a dream. This is real. Your sister is gone. Tonight, her husband is behind bars. Could you see her when you were shooting the rounds? Could you? Yeah, I was looking at her. I was shooting that straight up because it was just a, a getaway stop thing. A plea deal from the beginning with this case was out of the question for you and your client. Exactly. And we told them there will be no plea to a murder charge. What went through your mind when you heard the verdict? After I heard the first one, I was already gone. You were out of there. I was gone. You believed your client? Did. Wholeheartedly? Yeah. Katrina Bates was 35 years young, well-known, and loved at her place of employment. She was a beautiful person who had an amazing smile, and she was also very loyal. Even though she was the youngest of her siblings, Katrina was the matriarch of her big family. The last family gathering Katrina planned was a big birthday bash. It was the weekend before Thanksgiving in 2016. Katrina got everyone to Baltimore for three days of fun. She loved bonding and sharing experiences with her family because she worked very hard. She was our backbone of our family. She always made sure we had the right education. We paid our bills. We was all in order. She just made us come together, even if we lived far away. Any kind of special occasion, family reunions, birthdays. We always celebrate our birthday together because her birthday is a week before mine. We celebrated, had a birthday cookout with the family. All the family showed up. And technically, I wasn't even supposed to be there. <laughs> I'm not a big communicator. I don't like to socialize. She was my best friend. She was like my heart and soul. I loved her more than life. Katrina had been a beloved and respected member of the nursing staff at Retreat Doctors Hospital since July 2003. She was the nurse's house supervisor at night and would manage activities such as nursing care, nurse execution, and hospital policies during scheduled shifts. Katrina was doing all of this while she was pursuing her master's in nursing leadership. However, when she wasn't working on her personal career, she loved being at home with her husband and children. Alvin Banks, a former Marine, was a very successful RV salesman in Richmond, Virginia. The couple had a young son and daughter. To everyone who knew them, they seemed like the perfect couple. What was that marriage like? It was just so much love, so much togetherness, and he was so attentive to her. I mean, it was just loving family. When I saw them together, I can say they looked like they were loving. Um, I would have never guessed um, anything different. Court records don't show a history of any type of domestic violence, but it was until one dark and gloomy Sunday night when the image of their picture-perfect marriage was shattered by gunfire.
According to True Crime Daily, Alvin had just returned home from a trip out of town when Katrina confronted him about a few phone calls he had made. Katrina had found out he contacted her cousin and she wanted to know if there was something else going on. Why all the seven times? Like, what are you, where, where are you going with this? She said, no, you called her seven times. I'm like, Trina. I said, was driving back. We lost connection. She called me back. I called her back and she kept pushing. And I was like, I said, leave it alone. Alvin told his wife that her cousin only wanted to know if he had found her earrings. During the argument in their home, Alvin told police that he grabbed his firearm, made his way to the foyer of his house and began firing off shots. So I picked up a um, TV trick. I threw it downstairs, make sure I didn't hit her. Bam! I was like, stop. You're pissing me off. This is supposed to happen. I should have just grabbed it because I wanted to grab him. I said, I feel like I'm choking you right now. So I figured, grab my 45 and shot a couple rounds off in the air. Then that will make her check. So I went, bop, bop, bop. Thing was three. And I noticed it got, it got quiet. Katrina was at the bottom level when she was murdered. Out of the five shots that Alvin fired that evening, one bullet made its way through a plastic style door and into a bedroom downstairs where Katrina and their two-year-old daughter just happened to be. The toddler was sleeping at the time, but the bullet hit Katrina in her lung and spine. After, Alvin ran to Fire Station 6 and told a firefighter, I accidentally shot my wife. I said, dude, I shot my wife. I shot my wife. So he comes out and he's like, what? I said, I shot my wife. I said, let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. The document says, a police officer saw Alvin running down the street towards the house and pleaded with the officers to go into the home. When that police officer entered the house, it says he heard a young child screaming in the basement where they also found Katrina. Unfortunately, by the time rescuers arrived, it was too late to save her. While Alvin insisted that the ordeal was an unfortunate incident, investigators disagreed. The court record says investigators found three shell cases and three bullet holes in the living room. After searching the house further, his firearm was taken into evidence. He was also sent in for questioning. Shortly after Katrina was shot dead by her husband, Alvin admitted to cops that he pulled the trigger during a heated argument. He told investigators he fired the shots during the argument as a getaway, stop thing. He also said he immediately ran to a nearby firehouse for help after realizing he hit her. She said, no, you called her seven times. I'm like, Trina. I said, was driving back, we lost connection. She called me back, I called her back, and she kept pushing. And I was like, I said, leave it alone. I said, there's nothing going on. So basically this whole thing stamp of her thinking you're messing around on her Oh my God, it's, it's crazy, dude. Roxanne, um, all the women in the family are threatened by her. You know, I mean, she's a beautiful woman. So I picked up a, a TV trick. I threw it downstairs, make sure I didn't hit her. Bam, I was like, stop, you're pissing me off. This is supposed to happen. I should have just grabbed her because I wanted to grab her. That's how I feel like I'm choking you right now. So I figured, I grabbed my 45. It shot a couple rounds off in the air. Then that will make her check. So I went bop, bop, bop. I think it was three. And I noticed it got, it got quiet. Could you see her when you were shooting the rounds? Could you? Yeah, I was looking at her. I was shooting that straight up because it was just a, a getaway stop thing. I shot that straight up in the air. I don't know. It must have hit something and ricocheted down. At no point in my military mind would I ever point my weapon at my wife. I love her. Y'all hear me? Probably. I love her. Have you, you ever know. done that before? Hell no. Uh, okay. Hell no. Your wife has passed. I'm not going to not tell you, man. It would be right. Okay. No. Investigators weren't buying it, and after looking closer at the evidence, they were able to later arrest him and charge him with first-degree murder. Alvin was held without bail for nearly a year until his trial. How did the charge of second-degree murder get elevated to first-degree murder, and why? The difference between a first-degree murder and a second-degree murder is the premeditation and the 
the a forethought before pulling the trigger. Our theory was that not only was this firearm brought in to perhaps threaten and stop the argument, but actually to stop Katrina and kill her. Shannon Taylor is the Commonwealth's attorney for Henrico County. The idea of anyone bringing a firearm into an argument to suggest that some action is accidental is simply just not logical. What were the endangerment charges based on? The idea that these children were in the home uh, in close proximity to their mother at the time that she was killed. If he is the experienced marksman that he is asserting himself to be, he should know how to handle a firearm in a responsible manner. And firing it into the house is absolutely irresponsible. The defense contends that you overreached with going for the murder one charge. We believed that Mr. Banks' conduct was willful and premeditated, and because of the nature of the argument that he wanted to inflict harm upon her. Number one, you've got to shoot and tend to kill. Number two, you've got to do it with malice. That means a, a bad heart, mean-spirited way. And just because you shoot in the house, which shows anger, which shows frustration, doesn't equate with malice. Once he saw his day in court, Alvin continued to say he was innocent. During opening statements, his attorney told the jury why Alvin was not guilty of first-degree murder. When we were picking the jury, we asked them, just because my client fired the gun in the house and a bullet ultimately killed wife, you know, are you automatically already going to convict him? And we tried to select a jury that would be open-minded to this. The case largely came down to the flying bullets and their trajectories. Both sides agreed that three of the five bullets fired by Alvin were shot into the ceiling. The defense argued that the other two bullets were fired into the floor. There were a few points of the forensics that I thought were particularly important, just as their evidence laid out. Such as? Well, first of all, the bullet itself that everyone agreed was the fatal shot had a dent in it. He argued that dent was proof the bullet had ricocheted off of something. Maloney says in court, the prosecution's own expert agreed. Second, there was a hole in the door. Not just a hole, though. It was elongated. Their own expert agreed that that type of hole could very well be caused by a tumbling bullet rather than one that was traveling straight on. And third, the bullet wound in Katrina's shoulder. Another one of their experts, the medical examiner, by looking at the shape of the entry wound, she conceded that it was a reasonable possibility that that bullet, rather than pass straight through, was passing through because it was tumbling. Near the end of the trial, Alvin's attorneys were so confident the evidence would clear their client, they didn't need to put him on the stand. Instead, the 18-minute interrogation by the police detectives were played for the jury. There's nothing that he could add to the case. We said, why do we put him on? They already had his statement. The jury could have given the lightest offense manslaughter, and they chose not to even do that. Prosecutors pointed out that Alvin had intensive weapons training as an ex-Marine as proof that he intended to harm his wife that night. During a jailhouse call, he reportedly spoke to someone about life insurance, but his defense attorneys insisted that that inquiry from their client had nothing to do with the case. Nonetheless, Alvin was presented as a good father to his five children, two with Katrina and three with others that are adults. And in the end, the jury did not believe that he intentionally set out to murder his wife. How did you get him off? My partner and I felt from the very beginning that if we could show the jury that there was anger involved, but the anger wasn't directed towards, I am going to kill wife, but rather, I'm going to do something dumb like fire a gun inside the house, that they would be opened to our theory of what happened. However, Alvin was convicted on the counts of child abuse and neglect in connection with the incident. He was also found guilty of unlawfully firing a weapon and was sentenced to 16 months in jail. But by that time, he was credited with time served and released. Ever in your wildest dreams think that something like this would happen? No, I would never. 
especially less than 24 hours after seeing her. No. What went through your mind when you heard the verdict acquitted Alvin Banks? After I heard the first one, I was already gone. You were out of there. I was gone. Did Alvin Banks get away with killing his wife, your sister? From me, from my perspective, I believe so. How do you feel knowing that Alvin Banks is walking around free? I don't think that the, you would want those words on camera. With a weapon, there is no accident because you may have a choice. You never come to me and, and express to me what happened. Never said, I made a mistake. I messed up. I'm sorry. Why you can't come to me and say those words and mean those words? I haven't heard anything. I said, Trina, calm down. I said, this was not that serious. She was looking for her earrings and she called you first, but um, your phone was dead. She was furious. I mean, I had never seen her as mad before. According to prosecutors, you went off on a profanity ranting raid. Right. Is this true? Yes. You were outraged. Yes. You were very heated. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that how murders take place? People get upset, they get mad, they shoot somebody, they take them out. Were you that mad? No, that had never entered my mind. So I followed behind her. As I turned to go down the steps, I saw my 45. And I just grabbed it, shut off rounds. With your training especially, people will ask, why did you pick up a firearm during an argument and fire it several times? Rage, just angry. I wanted her to stop, you know, and I figured, you know, popping off a few rounds, she would hear that and be like, whoa, that, that's, we're going to end this conversation. I just knew that those rounds would, you know, go through the ceiling and, and uh, settle on the floor. I went downstairs and I saw her laying there. And I said, girl, get up, stop playing. I thought she was joking. As I got closer down to her, I saw something shining on her shoulders. And I reached down and touched it. And I brought my hand up and it was blood. And I was like, oh my God. When you heard your wife was dead, what went through your mind? First thing I thought were my children. If it wasn't for my children, I would, I would take my own life, without a doubt. But I have to be here for them. What did you think when those charges were filed against you? I thought they were absolutely ridiculous. I just, I could not believe it. Uh, involuntary manslaughter, all day long. My wife is gone, and it was my actions that caused that. That sounds like you wanted to harm her. When the detectives told me um, that, uh, that she passed away, in my mind I was thinking that I should have just choked her, um, which would have been a difference between an argument, possible incarceration, but my wife would be alive. I'm only a shell of the man that I was because my wife is gone. Um, the better half of me is gone. This will haunt me for the rest of my life. Um, this is this is torture. You have your kids. They're with you. But you were convicted of endangering their life. This was an isolated incident. If it was an unsafe environment from past uh, actions, absolutely. If I had a history of Anger, you know, temper tantrums or breaking things, shooting guns, anything. You now have a history of killing their mother. Right, but not one point in my time did I think that I would ever harm my children. If I do ever get my privileges back, they'll all be under lock and key. It just won't. It just won't happen. You know, um, my children mean the world to me. It was a bad decision. For Katrina's family, it was a devastating blow, and many people feel Alvin should be in prison right now and for a very long time. But instead, the Virginia husband is a free man. Where do you think the children should be? No matter where these children are, he should not be living under the same roof with these kids. Is that salt to your wounds that he is in the home with the children? Oh, it's not even a salt. It's like, um, if I can say it, it's just like I've been stabbed all over again and it's been taken away. He was charged with a crime of their life.